Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making a batch of chocolate cupcakes, but they have a hidden ingredient and it is this. This is a can of seasoned mixed greens and on the side of the can, there is a recipe for not just chocolate cupcakes. They're not just chocolate cupcakes because it contains a can of green. We're going to be pureeing the greens together with some other ingredients to make chocolate cupcakes. I'm making this because I want to know what these taste like. So this will not be the first time I've tried ingredients that we don't typically find in sweets. I've tried a sauerkraut cake. I've tried hard boiled eggs in cookies. I've tried black beans in brownies, all to varying degrees of success. I'll put links down below to those videos in case you missed them. But I have never used canned greens in a sweet before. So let's go ahead and make this. This is Glory Foods seasoned Southern style mixed greens, not just chocolate cupcakes. So here is the can of greens. And here is the recipe right here on the back. So this recipe is super simple. I think the most complicated thing is probably making the frosting. We're basically going to puree everything in a blender. It kind of reminds me of a book that was published a while back. I think it was called Deceptive Foods or Deceptively Simple, something to that effect. It was published probably over 10 years ago now, but it was about incorporating vegetables into your children's food by pureeing it and disguising it. My youngest doesn't really like vegetables. My oldest loves them. And if he doesn't like them, I just ask him to try it. And if he doesn't like to try it, then I ask him just to take one little bite of whatever green it might be. I completely understand and empathize with my youngest. As a little one, I detested anything green. Most vegetables actually, in general, I did not like, and fruits for that matter. My youngest does love fruit, so he eats a ton of fruit. But I remember having these standoffs with my parents about eating greens, and it was such a struggle. And I have decided not to have those battles with my child. I encourage him to eat at least one little piece of something. He gets plenty of fiber and I just don't want to have those battles because I remember greens in particular tasted so bad for me. There are a couple vegetables that he will eat and so I offer those. He likes spinach and yeah, I'm not a huge fan of disguising greens in food. and that kind of deal with my kids. I am grown now and I love greens of all different kinds. I love vegetables and I am thinking that by my example that my child as his taste buds evolve and as he grows that he too will come around to eating vegetables with gusto. That's my little theory. Alrighty, back to making not just chocolate cupcakes. Okay, we're gonna need a blender. Oh, behind me, my oven is preheating at 350 degrees. Actually, before we blend, we need to rinse the greens. We need to drain the mixed greens and add fresh water and drain again. So, let's do that. All right, let's open this up. I've never had canned greens before. I love greens, we love Kale, chard, spinach. I've got spinach that's ready to harvest in my garden as we speak. All right. So, there are the greens. Looking very green. Let's give them a taste. I'm curious to see how seasoned these are. Here we go. Eat the Mmm. Actually, pretty smoky. Very tender. Mmm. I'm very metallic tasting. <laughs> Mm-hmm, not surprising because they're tinned, but they're not very salty. There's definitely salt in there, but mm-hmm. Mostly this kind of smoky flavor that finishes metallic. But hopefully with the rinsing, we can get rid of that extra metallic flavor and maybe some of that smokiness. Although that might go well with the chocolate. Let's see. So the greens are very tender though. So I think blending this is gonna be just fine. Dump that 
into my bowl. Oh, that's actually a lot of greens. And now that I've drained them, looks like there's a bit of pepper flakes in there, I think. But not detecting any heat. A little bit of acid though. Okay, now we're going to rinse these. That's a lot of greens. So that's how many ounces of greens? One pound, 11 ounces, wow. We've rinsed the greens and now we're going to let them drain. To our blender, we're going to add the greens. It's quite a bit. Like fills the entire pitcher. Okay, one cup of applesauce. and a half cup of water. Cover this. And we're gonna puree that until it's smooth. It's gonna be a little loud. Pretty thick mixture. Now, pour our puree into a bowl. Look at that. Now we're going to add three eggs. And I think I'm going to use a whisk for this part and whisk that in. Okay, I wonder how this would bake up. This would just be kind of a, kind of a, maybe it might puff up a little bit like a souffle or something. I think it would need some salt. Okay, now we're gonna add one box of chocolate cake mix. So this will give us our leavening and our chocolate flavor and of course our flour. Actually, my special choice is this. I love this whisk. And then after we combine this, I think that's it for the batter. It's kind of gray in color. Interesting. And I definitely smell the greens as I'm stirring this. I smell the chocolate, but I smell the greens as well. The kind of smoky, canned <laughs> vegetable smell. That's that for the batter. Make sure we get all the way to the bottom to incorporate everything. Now, I have, <laughs> I have muffin pans lined with paper muffin liners, and we're going to scoop these in. So I'm gonna use a muffin scoop and I'm gonna fill these two thirds of the way up. Oop. That's actually pretty full, but gosh, if these taste good, boy. My kids will come home from school. Mama, what'd you make? Special muffins, special cupcakes. My kids are kind of similar to me in the sense that when it comes to baked goods or cakes, they're not huge fans of frosting. So this recipe comes with a frosting recipe as well, but I'm gonna go easy on some of them because we don't like a lot of frosting on our cakes. All right, so I'm gonna pop these into a preheated 350 degree oven and bake them for 16 to 18 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. And then we're gonna let these cool completely before we frost them. Okay, see you in a little bit. Alrighty, my lovelies. 
The cupcakes have come out of the oven. They are completely cooled and it's now time for us to make our frosting. In this bowl, I have one brick or eight ounces of cream cheese that is at room temperature. To that, we're going to add five tablespoons of room temperature butter. It's kind of warm today. Let's get all that butter into the bowl. Half a cup of cocoa powder. I'm going to give that an initial cream and then we're going to add our powdered sugar. Here we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is on low power, this machine. <laughs> so when you do this, don't add in all of your cocoa powder at one time. Okay? Okay. <laughs> oh my god. All right, here we go. <laughs> and because I like it, I'm going to add about a teaspoon, probably about a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And while this is going, I'm going to slowly add the powdered sugar. I've got four cups here. Now, to keep my bowl from moving around, add this little thing down below. All right, continue. Right, so this is getting very thick and it's going all over the place. So I'm just gonna rest that for a minute. And I think I might be able to use just a spatula to get the rest in. Because this is going to make a mess because this is only going to get thicker with each addition of powdered sugar. So I think we've got the initial kind of creaming of the cream cheese and the butter and we'll just sift in the powdered sugar as we go along. Okay. And because powdered sugar does tend to clump up, I'm gonna sift it in to get rid of any of those lumps. Yeah, we can just mix it in. We can earn our frosting. Already it's getting very thick. So we're gonna continue doing this until all four cups of the powdered sugar is incorporated. And then I'm going to place it into a piping bag fitted with a 1M tip. And then we're gonna frost our Cupcakes. Cupcakes are cooled, piping bag is filled, and now we can decorate our cupcakes. I'm just gonna make a little swirl right on top. All right, get the frosting. Okay, here we go. This piping tip is so great. It's super simple and easy to use and makes super cute cupcakes. <laughs> Look, perfect. Would you think that there's like a pound of greens in this cupcake? Nope, nope, nope. Sneaky, isn't it? Ugh.
<laughs> so pretty. Alrighty, my lovelies, I have completely frosted all of my cakes and there is the perfect amount of frosting for the number of cupcakes. I got 24 cupcakes and they're all beautifully iced. Now, finally, for the moment of truth, let's give these a taste. I think what I'm gonna do first is taste a plain one first and then we'll taste it with frosting. So here's just the plain cupcake and let's give it a go. It seems very, very, very moist. And let's tear it open. No hint of greens in there. If you look carefully, it seems to have a slight tinge of green, slight. And that's only because I know what went into this. I think if I were just eating this, I wouldn't even notice. Did you notice? Nope. Very wet. Alrighty, let's give this a go. Itadakimasu. Hmm. That's a very, very moist cake. Like squishy and damp. Like look. Very wet. Fully cooked, but very wet. These are at room temperature. Perhaps if they were refrigerated, they would be a little bit more less wet. And now that I've taken a bite, I can taste some of that smokiness that I tasted in the greens. Mm -hmm. Definitely. There's some chocolate in there, but I can definitely taste the smokiness. I can't taste any of the greens at all. Just that kind of hammy. <laughs> <laughs> flavor to it. It's not unpleasant and I think once we have it with the frosting it might not even be noticeable and it might be complemented by the sweet chocolatey flavors in the frosting but as it is just as a plain cake I don't think it's all that great. Alrighty finally moment of truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Once you have that frosting on top, it tastes 100% like a birthday cake. That frosting is actually delicious. I know I said earlier that I'm not a huge fan of frosting, but here it works really well. Because the cake itself is not very sweet. We added a lot of greens to that cake mix. So that sugar has been dispersed, but the frosting on the hand is very rich and very sweet and goes really well with the cake. And because the frosting is so good, you're not distracted by that kind of hammy flavor or the over kind of wetness of the cake itself. It's actually very good together like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just looked in the can here to see what type of mixed greens are in here. And it lists turnips and mustard. So turnip and mustard green cupcakes are actually pretty good if you have a really great chocolate frosting on top. <laughs> mm -hmm. Having said that, I think two things might help this recipe. Baking it a little bit longer, I baked these for 20 minutes because my cupcakes were rather large and my toothpick came out clean. I would even go a couple minutes extra just to get some of that extra moisture out of it. Also, I'm gonna try refrigerating these and I think that will help set up the cake a little bit more and make it a little less kind of just wet spongy. And besides that, it wouldn't change the frosting recipe whatsoever. The frosting is absolutely delicious. So there you have it, not just chocolate cupcakes, not half bad. The texture I think is the most off-putting part of the cake. Besides that, the flavor is actually pretty good. 
All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for joining me. Check out my website. I'll include a printable recipe there. And thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Green in my cake.